And welcome to Minute 23 of the Godfather, Godfather Minute. Minute. It's your weekly podcast where we go through the entire Godfather movie minute, minute by minute. minute. I'm Alex Robinson. And I'm Andy Robinson. And uh, yeah, should we uh, get right into Minute 23? Uh, well, is, first... No, that, just, no you, go, you go for it. Well, Alex, we can't proceed until you get your weekly Italian lesson. Are oh, you, are see, you ready? See, see. Are you ready? See. I can't hear you. See. <laughs> e minuto. E minuto. Numero. Numero. Ventitre. 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 E minuto. Men- menudo. No, no. Oh, e, e minuto. E <laughs> minuto. E minuto. Numero. Vente. Three. 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 Awesome. <laughs> you know, that was a bit of a stumble in that you one. Know what, afterward, Matter of practice. You, afterward, you can go back and listen to it a bunch, and then uh, yeah. we can overdub that. Right. <laughs> Although, <laughs> totally. if you're listening now, listeners, you are you are listening to that, that overdub was version. The so you can only imagine how terrible the first <laughs> oh, one was. Well, it's weak. It's weak. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we are discussing Minute 23 of The Godfather, and... Um, it uh, Johnny Fontaine had just finished singing, and this minute starts off with uh, Don and the John, Don and the Johnny, <laughs> uh, walking back into his office, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, the first thing th- Johnny whispers to the Don, and the Don's like, "I'll take care of it." Yeah, what does he say in that mm. in that whisper? He can't tell him the whole story about the movie. <laughs> Maybe he starts to. He's like, I'm having problems with it. And he's like, I'll take it. Like, yeah. He's just trying to shut him down right there rather than. I believe that he says, I'd like to talk to you in your office. Oh, does, he, does it say that? Like, I'm, I'm pretty the, sure in the book. I read that somewhere. Oh, OK. He actually oh, cool. has to speak with him. Or I'm sorry, speak with him privately. Mm. Yeah. And then he says, I'll take care. He says, I'll take care of it. Oh, that yeah. is odd. He means I'll take care of you talking to me personally. Mm-hmm. I'll arrange mm-hmm. it. Don't well, worry about it. And as, a, as we noticed in the previous minute. The the Don had was the only one who noticed that something was wrong mm. when Johnny was singing, and that's why he's, he he encouraged voice? everyone. Yeah, he encouraged yeah. everyone to get him a drink of wine. Oh, I see. So oh, maybe good. that's the Don referencing that. <laughs> um, so and and as as of yet, Johnny has not earned the nickname Johnny the Complain Fontaine. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is not so far. So far, he's more like Johnny the Refrain Fontaine because of all the singing he's been doing. But uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, and then the Don says, "Oh, Tom, go find Santino." Yeah, and it made me wonder: Does Don Corleone ever refer to Sonny as Sonny, or does he always call him Santino? I have the answer to that. Yes. In the book, Puzo wrote that the Godfather is the only one who refers to. San, uh, Sonny as Santino. Mm. Or, or I, I take it back, not that he's the only one who refers to him that, but that everybody else calls him Sonny. Right. And he is the one who sticks to his name, which could be the same thing, but I think I think Mama calls him Santino. That could be. That yeah. could possibly be true. That makes more sense. because yeah, uh, parents tend to stick with the original yeah. name, right? Well, and you know, also, like, you grew up. When you were, we were growing up, you, you, you went by Andrew. Mm-hmm. And then when you became an adult, it was switched to Andy. But I always still call you Andrew because yeah. I grew up with And that, I think so, most so. of my childhood friends do, too, yeah, which is funny because I never really chose people in college just started calling me. Oh, that. weird. And I, yeah. I would, didn't correct them. I didn't really care. Yeah. But it's funny how a name can change like that. I so, wonder if I wonder if Sonny, a.k.a. Santino, ever <laughs> like insisted that people call him Sonny. But he couldn't, of course, insist to his father. Yeah. I could see him telling people to call him that as a way of, like, engendering familiarity. Like, mm-hmm. oh, Santino, please. Or, like, so they, would they call him Santino or would they call him, like, Mr. Corleone? Oh, well, I guess, yeah. And like, call, call me Sonny. You well, punch the guy question. in the face. I wonder, well, Salazzo later calls him Sonny. Hmm, that's true. I, I can't if... imagine Sonny. Be, please, call me Sonny. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're friends here. Yeah. But, uh, hmm, I wonder. Hmm. And also, does, does the Don call all the siblings by their full names i think fredo he calls fredo but that makes sense well in the book the don calls him freddy oh freddy that's even shorter yeah actually well frederico is his full given name Mm -hmm. and i think they call him freddy in the book yeah and i think even the family calls him 
Freddy. Sometimes in the movie they call him Freddy. Doesn't um, I think uh, Kay calls him Freddy. Sometimes. Yeah, she does. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, anyway, but I don't remember the Don ever. Well, I think then the, the only time the Don mentions Fredo is when he's talking about the chain of command. Yeah. He's like, oh, and Fredo. Uh. Yeah. You know, he, doesn't, he doesn't call him Freddy then. He's just kind of like, or Fr- Frick Rico or whatever. The yeah. Is, so. And this is where we get to meet Fredo. Yeah, finally. Uh, yeah. It's so funny that we're 23 minutes in and we have not met Fredo Corleone yeah. our favorite character in the entire movie yeah <laughs> the one we possibly have talked the most about <laughs> yeah if you can true. the bonus yeah. um, content too right so maybe we shouldn't say anything about it here. We'll, just <laughs> we'll save it save it for another we'll time. save it for our our continuing description of fredo corleone's mickey mouse nightclub the <laughs> only we ever place talked about that <laughs> yeah it's the <laughs> only place where you will ever get respect mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the worst catchphrase because it sounds like you're appealing to the total losers like this is the only place you'll exactly get well as we said before that's most people most men yeah. are not alpha men here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it well so yeah we see fredo for the first time and he mm-hmm. has more hair i guess uh john cazell is wearing like a, a little toupee there yeah and uh, he seems kind of drunk yeah oh yeah and uh i think it's really great uh storytelling that in this whole wedding sequence we really the the aspects of the characters personalities we see is kind of what defines them for the whole movie mm-hmm. like the don is very uh like you know uh He's like loyal, but he's like you know rough, but also mm-hmm. you know can mm-hmm. do acts of kindness. And 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 uh, Sonny's the hothead, beating up the reporters. Yeah. Uh, Tom is like the business guy, mm-hmm. and Fredo is like the stumbling idiot. Mm-hmm. And Connie is the emotional one. Johnny, oh, that's true. She goes running, and Michael's all like, not only is he reserved, but he's like independent. Like and, originally, yeah. he's like this is my, you know he's kind of like yeah. He's his own person. That's a so. great observation. The characters are their DNA is burned into the viewers. Right. Yeah. It's a good, it's good uh, shorthand storytelling. And too. Carlo is seen as jealous. At least in the <laughs> book, true. he is. <laughs> and uh, Johnny Fontaine is seen as weak. <laughs> weak. weak. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, oh, and the, the other crime bosses, the other heads of the family are thinking ahead. Uh, uh, Bartini has the film. Oh, uh, that's true. Destroyed, so he's already thinking ahead. Yeah, and uh, Clemenza likes to dance and drink wine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what and about Polly? Polly thinks everyone's a stupid jerk. <laughs> and anyway, you won't be seeing him no more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, any uh, any uh, comment? Fredo just kind of uh, kisses uh, K. Yeah. Hello. And well, well I, rewatching that minute, I thought it was so funny. It happened so fast, but the very first microseconds of that. Of that scene, Mike, that, of that second. scene that yeah, my Fredo slaps Michael on the back of the head to yeah. get his attention. Yeah. Yeah, it's just so funny. He whoa, and Michael <laughs> kind of flinches, and Kay has this really funny reaction. She looks up, smiling. <laughs> I wonder if that was uh, improvised. It like, definitely had that feel. Where, where like he wasn't expecting yeah. him to slap him. Like, he did something different each time. Like he flicked his ear with his you know fingers, or <laughs> did all sorts of uh, give him a wet willy. That'd be. <laughs> A purple nurple. <laughs> That'd be one of those things where uh, Coppola is having so much fun. He just did dozens of take. By the, by the end of the scene, Michael's all beat up, all bruised up. <laughs> That's how his jaw got all like, and they needed to write an all scene explaining why his jaw was all sore. <laughs> or it was preparation for the slots of the scene, just to <laughs> toughen, him up. toughen him up a little bit. <laughs> Well, Alex, as you know, I am making my way through the book. Puzo is a fantastic writer, but mm-hmm. what I've noticed is that the book is different than the movie. That's right. The book is different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different. The book is different. The book is different than the movie. Yeah. So on page 16, Puzo introduces the character of Freddy. I'd like to read a little bit of it. Okay. Puzo writes, page 16, The second son, Federico, called Fred or Freddy, Fredo, was a child every Italian prayed to the saints for. Dutiful, loyal, always at the service of his father, living with his parents at age 30. Hmm. Yeah. He was short and burly, not handsome, wow. but with the same Cupid head of the family. The curly helmet of hair over the round face and sensual bow-shaped lips. Wow. Only in Fred, these lips were not sensual but granite-like. 
inclined to dourness, he was still a crutch to his father, never disputed him, never embarrassed him by scandalous behavior with women. Hmm. And we're seeing a very different <laughs> description. Different. <laughs> Despite all these virtues, he did not have that personal magnetism, that animal force so necessary for a leader of men. And he, too, was not expected to inherit the family business. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we see a very, very different description of, of Freddy. Yeah, he's much... Uh, I wonder who like could have been him... I wonder who would have been his character in, like, if they had cast it more in that role. Well, reading that description, he sounds like he looks a lot like Sonny. Or is it say, like, Clemenza? Oh, they a little just, bigger. They describe yeah. him as, like, burly and... Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Same lip, same... Yeah, but... Yeah. Maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe could, could have had, hair, yeah. had James Conn playing both roles. Oh, and just <laughs> one wears a fake must, like a mustache <laughs> on him. <and, laughs> Yeah, but but interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of uh, the the book, The Godfather by Mario Puzo, I have been reading uh, The Sicilian, mm. the follow up to The Godfather, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we'll be talking about that today on this episode's bonus content. It's bonus content. Bonus content. So, oh, uh, content. if make sure you stick around for that when we're done with this conversation. If you want to hear it, you can go to godfatherminute.com dot com slash support. And you'll find out there how you can get access to these cool bonus episodes. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. We've been talking for several weeks. I've been dying to talk about it. Really? (laughs) There there must be so much information. Well, especially when you and I see each other under different circumstances. And I'm like, I got to save her for the show. I got (laughs) to save her. You're just dying to. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really can't wait to see how much of it crosses over with the movie and the original book. Right. Yeah. So is that it for Fredo? It's a very quick introduction. Yeah. He leans in and kisses Kay. She seems to be okay okay with that. Oh, uh, I see. And uh, yeah, he's very drunk. I thought of this, just thought of this now when I used to live in New York City. Um, I lived in the uh, Chelsea area mm-hmm. and uh, there was a um, like tailor shop. You know, this mm-hmm. is this was like twenty years ago when New York had a lot more like small kind of local mom and pop sh- stores, and there was a tailor shop. And in the window, they had a picture of all the guys from The Godfather wearing their tuxedos. Oh, the like, classic, yeah, iconic like, photo. You know, uh, Michael wearing the military and the Don, you know, mm-hmm. and all lined up. And it mm-hmm. always made me wonder if, like, I got the impression that this was the guy who provided. You know, shot in New York, so I got oh, the impression my. that this was. The guy who did it, but I don't know for wow, sure. It wasn't like it wasn't like it said, you know, we did this. But yeah. I can't think of any other reason that I would have just one picture in the window of the, you know, them. Hmm. And it wasn't a, like a lot of people in tuxedos. It wasn't showing off like, oh look, yeah. we sell tuxedos. It was just a one picture in a frame. It was just so peculiar. Yeah. Wow. Let's say yes. Let's say it was. Let's say it was. Yeah. yeah. Did you go in? No, I, I didn't go in at the time. I would have gone in now because if we had a show, I would like interview them and stuff. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. You, you but, go in and and it's. Uh, it, it's like people from the movie. Oh, it's, it's like Bonacera like, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Nazarene <laughs> working. Yeah. yeah, we don't see a tailor in the movie, mm. I don't think. I don't think so. No. Yeah, I, I, was think trying th- do. I was trying to think maybe the, maybe during the, uh, when he's eliminating all the crime bosses, but I don't think a tailor is one of them. No. This guy getting a haircut. Yeah. But, uh, if you had gone into that shop, wh- who would you have pointed to in the photo to have the guy make you look like? You know, when you go to go get a haircut, you point yeah. to one of the images on the wall, and you say, make me look like that guy. That's what I do. <laughs> I'd probably see Marlon Brando just to see yeah. what kind of makeup work they would do. <laughs> you know, they shoving oh, paper yeah, towels actually. in my mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. Well, speaking of Marlon Brando, mm-hmm. now this is one of the scenes we've also been looking forward to. Mm-hmm. We have a little taste of Fredo, who we love, but now this is one of our favorite scenes, Johnny Fontaine. Johnny. The, now this, Johnny! This is where we see how he earns his nickname, yeah. Johnny the Complainer Fontainer. <laughs> So yeah, he goes to we 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 join him in the middle of a uh, his his he's sitting on the edge of the Don's desk, mm-hmm. which automatically tells you he has a different relationship with the Don than the other uh, supplicants who had mm-hmm. to kind of grovel and petition. He's sitting totally on the edge of the almost in his lap like so many cats. Oh yeah, and he's telling John he's telling the Godfather about his voice. It's just not as strong as it used to be. That's weak. It's, it's weak. weak. It's weak. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think that would be in the top 25. And if you remember the last one of the last bonus content se- sessions we did, we talked about the top 10 iconic lines for movies. Yeah. I think that's one. 
It's we, my well, voice. We should it's make, we. Maybe in another bonus content, we should talk about lines that we use the mm. most, that we quote the most, because that <laughs> one is definitely one that we quote. Isn't there software we can have go through all the MP3s and identify? <laughs> no, I mean in our daily lives. Oh, okay. Like ones that we use oh, in our regular right. lifetime. Got so, it. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can already tick off a few of yeah. them. Yeah. So um, Johnny is talking about his voice being weak. Yeah. And uh, that also we talked about... Um, Frank Sinatra. Oh, yeah. So this this um, storyline he's talking about here where he's saying uh, this is uh, another thing that an allegation that Frank Sinatra, he wanted to roll a movie from here to eternity. Mm-hmm. And he didn't, you know, he wasn't going to get the part. And then suddenly really? the and then suddenly the producers like changed their mind about it. But wait a minute. He originally was not going to get that part. Frank Sinatra that- like wanted to be in this movie. Yeah. And they're like, no, you're, you're not going to. But that's but that's crazy. That part was perfect for him. He wouldn't even have to act. <laughs> he could act like a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Frank Sinatra was going to be in the movie. He they did not get the part, and then the producers changed their mind. Oh. And, and this was at a time when Frank Sinatra was having uh, vocal problems, mm-hmm. so he was trying to look into doing more movies because he's like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to sing. I need yeah. to kind of start branching out. And, yeah. Wow. Uh, then uh, there were rumors, of course, that it was. Um, the mafia, but mm. most people say it probably wasn't. If anything, it was probably Frank Sinatra's wife slash love interest, uh, Ava Gardner, who mm. was a big movie star mm-hmm. at the time, and she might have pulled some strings to, mm. get, to get him the part. But uh, mm. interesting. So this was another thing that Frank Sinatra was mad about that they're perpetuating the story. Oh, that's that he, great. That he was the, uh, <laughs> got the movie of the- no wonder he was chewing out Puto <laughs> at that dinner party. <laughs> <laughs> I can get my own parts. John Wayne, I'll kick your ass, partner. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have been working on my Frank Sinatra. I just can't get it. I can't. I can't. Your Frank get Sinatra impression, really? Yeah. Can you do a couple um, of lines? I I can get my own parts. You, Ava Gardner, don't do me no favors. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. And I told you my voice is weak. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I do Frank you Sinatra see? imitation, I imitate Joe Piscopo doing Frank Sinatra from Saturday Night Live. Lay one on me, come on. There's that one sketch where he's like... Uh, uh, Is that from Saturday Night Live? Yeah, where the, the, the one I remember, there's two bits I remember. One where he was having a talk show and he was talking to Frank Sinatra. Uh-huh. Actually, no, that was oh, Phil was- Hartman doing Frank Sinatra. Oh. Phil Hartman did Frank Sinatra and Joe Piscopo both did Frank Sinatra. <laughs> It's really funny because he wasn't really like a force in popular entertainment at that time. But yeah. Anyway, so yeah, he's Frank Sinatra is doing a duet with Stevie Wonder, who's played by Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing a parody of like Ebony and Ivory, mm-hmm. and uh, and Steve, Stevie Wonder says, uh, um, "Oh, oh I am black and you are white." Yeah, and then Frank Sinatra says, you are blind as a bat, and I have sight. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> Phil Harmons was more like, ah, come on, sister, ring-a-ding. You know, he was yeah. much more like a, a, a brawling, kind yeah. of angry Frank yeah. Sinatra. But uh, anyway, so neither of us clearly can do Frank Sinatra. But I don't even know how many people even can know Frank Sinatra's voice anymore mm-hmm. enough, his speaking style, too. Uh, to no. Do, so. Well, it's funny how generational, as generations move on, different characters from the past are referenced. I'm guessing all those Saturday Night Live guys, Frank Sinatra is much closer to them, their pop culture. And oh, so sure, that's why yeah. they were doing the imitations. Yeah. Um, it makes you wonder which ones now will last for the next one. Well, it's funny. We'll talk about that a little bit next week. So uh, okay. we'll uh, um, get to that. So um, I do have uh, in the book, there's a little scene lit that precedes where it's different than the movie. It's definitely different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different than the movie. The book is different. The book is different. The book is different than the movie. Yeah. And the scene lit precedes when scene lit. <laughs> I think I made that up. I don't know if I've heard that before. <laughs> It precedes where Johnny, the, com- the complainer, starts telling his story to to Don Corleone. It's actually when he comes in. Uh, he has an interaction with Tom Hagen, and I like to read that. Mm-hmm. Um, so a little bit of background. Uh, 
you need to start doing like a background theme for when you're reading sections. Like oh, a, yes. yeah, like a thing that like under like a bit music oh, bed underneath definitely. it, so yeah. that you'll know uh, which parts. Oh gosh, what, what should the genre be though, or should it change depending on what I'm reading? That going back to that Fredo section. Well, I don't think it should be. I don't think it should be like. Uh, I think it should just be like. Uh, like accordion, you know, like you're in an oh, Italian restaurant, got and it, then, got it. you know, like just you can have a conversation. You don't want it to be, yeah. over, you don't want to overwhelm yeah. the dialogue. So, uh, but what if it's the scene, for example, where where Michael is shooting McCluskey? It's still not the same. Oh, it's, well, it's in the Italian <laughs> restaurant, so an accordion yeah. would be right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, mm. when Johnny uh, walks in, uh, Puzo writes. Tom Hagen held out his hand when Johnny came into the room. Johnny shook it and said, How are you, Tom? But without his usual charm that consisted of a genuine warmth for people, Hagen was a little hurt by this coolness, but shrugged it off. It was one of the penalties for being the Don's hatchet man. Mm. So just interesting how Hagen is in this role. He's treated coolly by a lot of people because he's the one that usually is the... I guess the spokesperson, the hatch per, he does all man. the, he does all the, he's like, yeah. the, uh, so, so that would seem to me like I would feel bad for him as opposed to being like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to talk to that guy. Yeah. You know, well, and a little bit more background too. It's just is me, that, I guess. Is, is that, um, so Johnny had in the book, Puzo wrote that Johnny had divorced his wife years earlier mm-hmm. so he could be with another woman, a, mm-hmm. real, a movie star. Uh, and Johnny knew that the Godfather was mad at him for that, for di- getting That's divorced. also Frank Sinatra. Oh, exactly. Frank Sinatra yeah. was married to a good Jersey girl, and then once he got famous, he dumped her. And uh, wow, no uh, wonder yeah. Frank Sinatra's <laughs> pissed and yelling yeah. at the television station. And Johnny knew that Godfather was mad at him uh, because every time Johnny would call, Tom would answer and said that the Godfather wasn't available. And so Johnny knew that the Godfather was mad at him. Uh, but see. and that's when, why he's cool to Tom. Yeah, like, uh, he blames Tom for exactly. Yeah, not having a direct. But line. that's the price of being the Don's hatchet man. Yeah. Uh, but Johnny knew that when he received Connie's wedding invitation, he knew that the Godfather had finally forgiven him. Oh, okay. or else he would not have invited him. Oh, okay. When 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 Johnny received the invitation, he realized that okay, the, yeah. the Godfather finally forgave him, and so he yeah. definitely needed to go and yeah. uh, show his respect at the wedding. I wonder how long ago Sonny was married. Hmm. Like, do you think they had? Well, I guess the daughter of. I guess Teresa's parents would have thrown the wedding. Usually, the mother, so, parents of the bride, yeah, are usually the ones yeah, throwing the wedding, right? right? Yeah. So, so uh, mm. although you have to think that they had to kick in a little bit, yeah. Uh, no, no, Probably. Teresa, Teresa is is it's Tom's wife. Yeah, what's You're talking uh, about Sandra? Sandra, that's mm. it. So, uh, yeah, and she's a t- she would have been uh, Italian too. Yeah, so. and they already have kids that are running around at the wedding. So, yeah, it's been so a few years. We got a well. Puzo wrote that Fredo was 30 at this time, at the time of the wedding. So Sonny was older than that. So he'd probably be like 33. Yeah. yeah. And Michael would probably be 28. Just out of the army. I mean, Something like pretty that. Pretty much yeah. during the, he was in the army while he was, uh, while he well, had been in college. Though the Marines, yeah. while he had been in college. So he's probably mid 20s. Yeah. And then uh, four years in the war. Where does Tom Hagen rank in this? Do you know? Oh, the ages? Mm. I feel like he's going to be well, closer yeah. to Sonny's age. Yeah, because they, they hung out yeah. together. <laughs> he's like, uh, he was like 32 when yeah. Sonny referred. I always <laughs> think of Tom Hagen always looking the same age. No matter what. <laughs> Walking around in tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> when, he, when he kills the knife salesman with the board with the nail through it, right, he's yeah. like 35, 40 years old. <laughs> Sonny's like, who are you? I'm just looking out. I'm just... Looking out, watching your back, Sonny. Someone on the... Hey, uh, you think you could take me into your family? <laughs> He's like a 40-year-old guy at that time. <laughs> it's just business. It's not personal. <laughs> Somebody on the Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse nightclub on Facebook was complimenting, uh, I think, your Robert Duvall impression. Get so, out of uh, here. Yeah, That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so well, there you go. Maybe oh. you should keep working on it. Well, maybe I should take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So Johnny starts talking and complaining. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Does he get weak? Yeah. Does he? How far does he get in the complaining in this minute? Uh, It ends with him. um, He's saying uh, the part would be perfect for him, and this guy waltz. He 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 won't give him the picture. Yeah, I think that's the next minute he actually gets into all that. Well, I think it literally. I wrote down the line. It literally ends with him saying he won't won't give me the picture. picture. So yeah. 
I think maybe the part about being perfect might be in the next. Uh, let me look at this. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, the last line he says, Waltz, Waltz, you won't give it to me. He says, there's no chance. No yeah, chance. That's in the next one. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I also quote a lot, too. Oh, that's great. That's so Johnny great Fontaine one. is almost like uh, like Tommy two times because he's, he's like, my voice <laughs> is weak. It's weak. It's weak. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, uh, I, I'm going to really try to start doing no that in, in my interactions with people in, in the real world. Repeating Just stuff? Repeating things. Repeating, repeating things. <laughs> I don't know. It's no chance. Is no it, chance that'll did, work. Did, did people talk like that back then? You know, back then? Or is it is that something for the movies? Just what, to they highlight the, stuff? Yeah. Hmm, that's a good question. I bet some people do say that. Back then? I think even now, some people really. I mean, it does seem very I don't know. theatrical. It, yeah, to say, it stands like, out. I'm just wondering yeah. if back then it was something more yeah. common. Also, I love when people refer to movies as pictures. Yeah, that's a very old fashioned. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Whenever possible, I try to say like, "Oh, did you see that new Star Wars picture?" <laughs> something like that. <laughs> flick. Yeah, flick. Um, flick sounds more like fifties. Pictures should yeah. be something more like thirties and forties, more like old school uh, kind of. Yeah. So, um, then, oh, one other point, just an interesting comment is when Johnny starts telling this story, mm-hmm. uh, I, I love the shot because Johnny's leaning in, you just see sort of the back of the mm-hmm. Godfather. Mm-hmm. And the first question that the Godfather asks, What's his name? What's his name? I think he's already thinking ahead of, of the connections he has to try to influence. This oh, yeah, guy. or like if he already knows the guy, yeah, you're yeah. like, Oh, Hollywood big mm-hmm. shot. <laughs> Well, that's all I have for, for... Well, there's one thing left to do. Mm-hmm. We have to rank this minute. Where oh, do we, what are we rating? What do we do? What do we rate? Oh, boy. We got some... Uh, a little bit of... Uh, yeah. A little bit of... Well, a little bit of Brando. A little bit of Brando. You got a little bit of Brando. You got a little bit of Johnny getting into his story. And we have the debut of Fredo. Oh, that's great. And it's classic Fredo. <laughs> Drunk. <laughs> uh, violating boundaries. Personal slapping, space. Slapping Michael around. <laughs> Did he learn that from Mo Green? The, the <laughs> slapping girl? I guess this was before Mo Green yeah, was a, a yeah. factor. One, as we'll, well see. They might have met. Oh, maybe. Do you think? Uh, no, Mo Green's already out in Vegas. I know, but do you think you don't think Fredo ever went out there oh, and, and or like when Hyman Roth was coming to like do deals and stuff? Yeah. You know, like big deals. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder. T- I wonder too if the Don knew way back that Fredo was not going to be not going to lead the family business. Oh, he so, knew. so maybe, yeah. So maybe yeah. he did send him out there so, yeah. to just to get a feel. For maybe it. start like a, a restaurant, a nightclub, a, a diner, <laughs> a nightclub. <laughs> I've been talking to those folks at Disney. We can work out a deal for you. <laughs> uh, I wish they would do like a special edition of the Godfather. What do you mean? To, so that you could have like, Frankie Five Angels at the wedding oh. and like a young Mo Green at the wedding. Oh, so like, a whole nother movie and fill in. Like not a whole nother movie, but just like do this movie, but then like digitally put in. Oh, so like a kid playing Mo Green and, oh, and, a, and a young yeah. uh, Frankie Five Angels. He probably was probably only Frankie Four Angels that, yeah. that time. <laughs> so uh, anyway, back Quattro to reading this. Pan- Frankie Quattro Pangeli. Quattro Tangeli. <laughs> uh, so what do you rank it? Oh boy. What do you rate it? There's a lot going on. It's tempting to go five. I know it is. It like, is. Feel like you're giving everything mm, five. No. Hey, you know what? Five. Let's go five. What are we here for? Yeah. Who's gonna argue with a five? Yeah. Right? Five. Yeah. Five angels. Five angels. <laughs> we got you got Brando, you got Fredo. And Johnny John Fontaine. And Johnny Fontaine starting one of the most iconic st- tales yeah. in the Godfather. And saga. saying one of those lines. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean the line, it's weak. It's weak. It's weak. But still, you gotta give him some credit <laughs> for it. So will you, five, will you give him some credit? Will you give him credit for it? Uh, I would, but my credit's not good enough to buy him out. Oh, so you're saying there's no chance? No chance you'll give him <laughs> no <credit>. chance. No <laughs> chance. Uh, I do have one one point I would like to make that we referenced on an earlier minute, Alex. You you posed the question when you were talking about. Uh, Frank Sinatra learning how, learning circular breathing. Oh right, yeah, I, from uh, Dorsey, Tommy from Dorsey. Tommy Dorsey, the trombone yeah. leader of the band. And I le- I learned all about it. You learned how to do it. I didn't learn. I but just so you know, I have not inhaled 
since we started this episode. Oh, well, I have, wow. but it's been continuous. Wow, that's yeah. crazy. So what did you learn about the continuous breathing? It's called circular breathing. Mm-hmm. It's a technique used by, by the way, this is courtesy of Wikipedia oh. that I just donated to this past week. Oh. Yeah, I donated, I think it was like five or ten bucks. Nice. Do my do my part and small bills cash small bills cash oh i'd love to get into that wikipedia purse sweet tomato <laughs> circular breathing rotten is- tomato <laughs> yeah. that's another website rotten tomatoes is another website it's <laughs> another website circular breathing is a technique used by players of some wind instruments to produce a continuous tone without interruption it is accomplished by breathing in try it alex <gasps> th- through the nose oh. While simultaneously pushing air out through the mouth using air stored in the cheeks. But you're still inhaling while you do that? I'm doing it right now. (laughs) That sounds so natural. I can't even tell. I haven't practiced yet. I didn't say it was easy. It's not easy. Wow. Yeah, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. (laughs) The technique. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to start slapping you like like Fredo. (laughs) Get your breathing again. The technique was developed independently by several cultures and is used for many traditional wind instruments. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? So they, I think so it's fascinating how different people across the planet developed certain techniques independent without Parallel influence. evolution. Parallel evolution. Yeah. Uh, however, they believe it started in the 13th century. Mongolian metalsmiths who specialized in gold and silver used circular breathing. Are you still doing it? <laughs> He's getting really lightheaded. Okay. <laughs> Oh, he, these metal these metal smiths uh, used it for crafting various decorative and ornamental items. In crafting such item, you might be asking, why did they need it? What? Do? In crafting such items, these craftsmen were required to blow continuously to the flame through a pipe with a needle-like hole in order to make the hard metal in order to make the hard metal melt or soften. I guess if you had gaps in that, it would distort it. Wow, is it yeah. that sensitive? Or even just going... <gasps> Would, would boom you totally start over to- <laughs> starting over <laughs> wow yeah all right yeah. well good good for you That's mongolian so metal you sniffs. asked you asked oh i need i need now music for that you asked and i answered <laughs> <laughs> what would the what's the genre of that that's maybe something simple like a horn sound right you uh, asked da, da, da. well it should be like I a asked. A like a because oh, yeah. it's like you're you asked, meaning like <laughs> percolating, then I answer fanfare. Perfect. So, yeah, although so. I have so many awesome music ideas to supplement this, mm-hmm. this podcast, but listening back to the bonus material in particular, I love our imitation <laughs> of technology <laughs> doing, <laughs> we're like Bobby it's, McFerrin's, yeah. But and who's the guy from uh Police Academy, Police Squad, Michael Winslow, Michael Winslow mm, from Police Squad, totally, yeah. yeah. He does all the sound <laughs> effects, I, so I sort of like us doing it. So if I read from a chapter next time, will yeah. you do the accordion music just sure. with your vocals? Oh, I'll try to, okay, I'll try, I'll do it. I'll really, really try, okay, honest, I'll try. <laughs> and you can do that also. Mm. That's all I got. All right. And so, what's our bonus material content? I'm going to talk about the Sicilian. Sicilian. All right, then, everyone. Uh, that'll wrap up this minute. Um, you can always go to our website, godfatherminute.com. And we're also on Twitter, godfatherminute.com. And um, Wait, did you repeat that a la Johnny Fontaine? No, no chance. No, no chance. Ch- <laughs> you can repeat it again? <laughs> Uh, and then we're also we have on Facebook. You can join Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse Nightclub, where mm-hmm. we uh, want to hear you talk about the God. We'll give you a chance to talk about the Godfather mm-hmm. for once. You is it correct you have to answer a few questions to 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 join the club? There are three questions, but if you've made it this far into the podcast, you will have no trouble answering the yeah. old, those these three questions. Well, so. and I think the results of the quiz determine how much respect you get, mm. and if you're below a certain threshold, we let you in. Oh, I see. If you have too much respect, <laughs> then you yeah, would not no, be allowed no. in. So, okay. Yeah, and then you good. go to Mo Green's uh, skimming casino. <laughs> yeah, totally. With a plaque of him on the wall. <laughs> oh, no, there's not even a plaque. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. Stick around for the bonus material if you're one of those types of people. And we will... Oh, what's... Oh, yeah. Leave the gun and take the cannoli to Godfather Man. Yeah.